Oh yeah, here we go now into velocity vectors, acceleration vectors, position vectors, speed, a little bit of distance, and you might recognize this if you watched an earlier video in this lesson, just a replay of these ideas. Remember that a position vector describes the direction and the distance an object or point is from where we started. And again, I stated this before, think like a basketball starting point where it's shot and then all the way up to maybe a point in time where you're looking at it up from your eyeballs over to there. So there's the direction and distance. A velocity vector describes the direction and end speed with which a point or object is moving. So that would be like if we stop and say, hey, what's the basketball doing at this point in its arc? So that would be like a tangent vector, if you will. And then from there, we have components to that vector. We've got the horizontal movement, that's going to be x prime of t. We've got the vertical movement, that's going to be oi prime of t. And then an acceleration vector describes the direction in and rate at which the velocity is changing. So when you're talking about something that's shot up in the air, there's really only one acceleration vector, it's gravity pulling down, unless there's wind pushing against it or pushing uh, in the direction of motion, whichever way it's going. But either way, they're not that bad. They're really easy to find. So just a quick overview of those. So a velocity vector, position vector, or tangent vector, we're going to start out with everything. A velocity vector, x of t, y of t, that's our, well, it comes from our position vector. Right, so x of t and y of t is our position vector. That's where we are anywhere, be it a path that you're walking on, a path that a duck swims on in a pond, whatever the parametric equations describe. That's your position. x prime of t comma y prime of t with these funky looking braces on the sides. That's the velocity vector. So that's all. It literally consists of how much you're moving left and right, how much you're moving up and down. And I pointed that out before that if the path that we're moving on is something like this, then your velocity vector is essentially going to be like a tangent vector. It's like, just like a tangent line that has two components. This would be y prime of t. That's the vertical component. And then this would be x prime of t. So it's how we're moving left and right and how we're moving up and down paired together is going to give you the overall tangent vector. And we'll go over speed in a second. Speed would be the magnitude of that, the tangent vector. So the velocity of tangent vector, again, represents the instantaneous rate of change of an object at any time t. And there's the picture of it. Uh, in general, the slope of that tangent to the curve, oh, it's d by dx. I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It's just what we did in parametric. It's y prime of t over x prime of t. These are some of the main ideas. A couple other main ideas, and then we're going to use them. We're going to put them into practice. So it then follows that if the velocity vector is x prime of t and y prime of t, the acceleration vector is x double prime of t and y double prime of t. It's literally just the components of how these values are changing. The rate at which x is changing is velocity, and the rate at which that is changing is acceleration. The rate at which y is changing is y prime. The rate at which that is changing is y double prime. That's it. You take two derivatives of the x component and the y component, you got acceleration vector. Um, and I have a fill in the blank here for some reason. So since you have a velocity vector, by finding its magnitude, right, how much it is, you obtain, or have the answer down there, speed at a point. So the speed, which sometimes is denoted with these double bars, almost looks like a super insulated absolute value um, of v of t, is equal to, and here's your function. And that should remind you of arc length. In fact, it makes a lot of sense that this is speed, because what we're essentially doing here is we're taking this guy right there, your tangent vector, and we want to find the magnitude of it. And as we talked about, this part right here is y prime of t. That's the vertical component. That's x prime of t. And if I square this leg of this right triangle, boom, and I square that leg of this right triangle, a bam, and then take the square root of that, I get the magnitude of this velocity vector. It's Pythagorean theorem. That's the speed. The distance is literally the arc length. So that would be the integral from a to b of speed, quite literally. And that's going to be square root of and everything that you've seen before, which we've proven that distance is arc length in the past. We actually did that in the parametric section. So if you want to check that out, you can. The other way of looking at this, though, is that you're taking speed, which we now have, times a small change in distance, or sorry, a small change in time, and rate times time, there's that rate times time again, RT, gives me a little tiny distance. If I add up all those little tiny distances over the time interval, I get the overall distance. Very cool. Come on. It's awesome, right? High fives. Let's keep going. OK, so let's do a problem with this stuff. All right, we'll put all this together and we'll be in good shape. So 
Actually, we'll do a bunch of problems here. So a particle moves along the curve described by the position vector. Think of this as like you have, if, if you must rewrite it, x of t equals t squared and y of t equals t cubed minus t. Wait until you see how quick these problems are. It's like parametrics. Find the velocity vector at time t equals 2. So what we need is we need x prime of t, which is just taking the derivative of that, which is 2t. And then we want the velocity vector in the y direction as well. It's y prime of t, which is 3t squared minus 1. OK, so then the velocity vector itself is going to be composed of x prime of 2, y prime of 2. Sometimes you'll see that with these braces. Sometimes you'll see them with parentheses. But if it's denoted velocity vector, we know what we're going after here. Now it's just plugging 2 into each of these things. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 plugged into y prime, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, minus 1 is 11. There we have it. There's our velocity vector with one heck of a bad brace at the end there. There we go. It's a little better. All right. Find the acceleration vector times t equals 2. So the acceleration vector is going to come from x double prime of t, which is the derivative of that, which is 2, and y double prime, y double prime of t, which is going to be just 6t. 1 goes to 0. So the acceleration vector is x double prime evaluated at 2 and y double prime evaluated at 2. And that ends up equaling out to just plugging 2 into here. Well, there's nothing to plug 2 into. Our acceleration is constantly 2. All right, that's nice. And then 6 times 2 is 12. So there our acceleration is 2 comma 12. Nice. So what that means is that time t equals 2, we're moving to the right and up. And we're accelerating in that rightward direction and in the upward direction. So not only going right and up, but we're going faster in that direction. And this says find t speed, we'll go with the speed, of the particle time t equals 2. Again, that's knowing your formula. So speed is equal to the square root of x prime of 2 squared plus y prime of 2 squared. Nice. And that ends up equaling out to, well, x prime of 2 we already have. That's 4 squared plus y prime of 2 squared is 11 squared. So we already have those two values. And you could leave it like that on the BC exam, or we could simplify it. That's going to be the square root of 16 plus 121 is the square root of 137. We don't have units, so you do not need to provide units. Not bad, right? I didn't think so either. All right, so we're going to keep going with these ideas. This says find the distance the particle travels from t equals 0 to t equals 5. Now, remember that that's the integral from a to b, which in this case is going to be from 0 to 5, of the square root of x prime of t, which we already know is 2t. So that's x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared, which is going to be 3t squared minus 1 squared dt. Now this is pretty darn gnarly, and I don't believe it's going to factor out so beautifully. So what I'm, I'm doing the factor in my head right now, and I'm like, yeah, it's not going to factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my calculator. So I'll be right back with you with the answer here. And there you have it through the magic of a little bit of a calculator action. We have about 124.147 or 124.148 units. So that's the distance we travel from 0 to 5. Find the angle the particle is moving with relative to the x-axis time t equals 2. This is a different kind of problem. So let's go back. We're told that the velocity vector is 4, 11. All right, what does that mean? So when I want to know the angle we're traveling in, we don't actually use position values. Because remember, the position vector goes from the origin to wherever we are. That would give us the angle with respect to the x-axis, but from the origin. That's not what I'm interested in. Right? What I'm interested in, let me erase that and get rid of all that jazz right there. What I'm very much interested in is knowing at that instant in time what it is that we're doing. So imagine that the curve goes, I don't know, something like this. I don't know what it looks like, but just arbitrarily drawn out a piece of the curve. We already know from our previous slide that we've got a velocity in the x direction of 4 and in the y direction of 11, so something upwards like that, right? And so what that means is at that instant in time when t equals 2, you've got this little triangle going on. y velocity is 11. That's 4. And so with respect to the x-axis, that would be this way right here. It's almost like you take this triangle and put it down, place it down the x-axis. So we're looking for theta right there. That's what we want. 
So how do you find the angle at which a particle or anything is moving with respect to the x-axis? You take the tangent inverse. You might be like, tangent inverse, why? Well, the tangent of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Sorry, the opposite over the adjacent. And that would be essentially the vertical velocity over the adjacent velocity, the horizontal moving velocity. So overall, this then goes to the tangent inverse of 11 fourths. And then when we plug that into our calculator, we'll have our answer, which I'll give to you shortly. And to the power vested in my calculator, we've got 70.017 degrees, or if you're taking the BC exam, it'll be in radians, 1.222 radians. Not so bad. So the idea there is you want to know the angle with respect to the x-axis, essentially how fast are we going upwards and over, make a little triangle, find the tangent inverse to get your angle there with respect to the x-axis. It's pretty cool. All right, we've got one more little problem, and then we're done so with the lesson. It's pretty exciting. All right, so for a particle moving in the xy plane, its velocity is v of t equals that john right there. x of 0 is negative 2, y of 0 is 7, find the particle's position vector, and its position at t equals 4. Whoa. OK, so that's a lot of stuff right there. Not only do we want the position at t equals 4, but we actually want the vector itself. This is a little bit different. Normally, I would use the fundamental theorem of calculus to figure out x of 4 and y of 4. But because we're asked specifically for the position vector, and then its position at t equals 4, I'm going to find just overall the position vector, which would be x of t or r of t or whatever you want to call it. So to get that, I'm going to integrate just my x component first. That's velocity. So it's like I got x prime of t and y prime of t. So if I integrate velocity in the x direction, that's 4t cubed minus 3t squared dt, then I'm going to get out my position function, x of t. That's what I'm going after. So it'd be t to the fourth minus t cubed plus c. And then we'll solve for c there. We know that when we plug in 0, we get out negative 2. So that'd be negative 2 equals 0 minus 0 plus c. So that's negative 2 equals c. So then x of 2, or x of t, I'm sorry, is equal to t to the fourth minus t cubed minus 2. Now, I don't normally solve for c unless I'm told to find the equation, which we were. So I've got x of t. Let's do the same for y of t. So the position in the y direction is going to be equal to the integral of the velocity in the y direction. So that's 1 minus sine of pi t. Notice that we're just splitting this up into separate pieces, x component, y component. The integral of 1 is t. The integral of sine pi t is interesting. Usually it'd be minus cosine, but you have that negative there. So it's going to be plus cosine with the pi t. The derivative of that would give you negative sine pi t times pi. Well, there is no pi there. And the derivative of this should give us that, so I have to balance that out with a 1 over pi. The derivative of this will kick out a pi with the chain rule, which will cancel with that 1 over pi and leave us here. And that's plus c. That's kind of funky, I know. You can use u sub if you're not comfortable with doing it that way, for sure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 0 and get out 7. So when I plug in 0, uh, let's see what we get. We get 7 equals 0 plus, now the cosine of 0 is 1 times 1 over pi is 1 over pi plus c. So 7 minus 1 over pi is equal to c. So then my position is y of t equals t plus 1 over pi cosine pi t plus 7 minus 1 over pi which is your c value. So there's x of t and y of t. So your position vector is quite literally this. Like if you put it all together, your position vector would look like this. t to the fourth minus t cubed minus 2, comma, tips a lot of copying, t plus 1 over pi uh, cosine of pi t plus 7 minus 1 over pi. Who made that constant, 7 minus 1 over pi? Ugh. So that's your position vector. That's what that is right there. OK, now, how do we then find the position at t equals 4? Easy peasy. All we're going to do is take t equals 4 and plug it in. Right, so the position vector, x of 4, y of 4. We'll plug that john into here. That's going to end up equaling out to, I'm going to do mental math here, uh, 4 to the 4th. Oh, my word. That's going to be 256 minus 4 cubed is 64. So 256 minus 64 
is, I believe, 192, I want to say. Uh, minus 2 would be 190, sorry. So it'd be 190 when you plug 4 into that. Again, 256 minus 64 is going to be that 192 minus 2 is 90. Then we're going to plug in 4 here. This I'm just going to write out because it's going to be a gross number. When you plug in 4 here, you get cosine of 4 pi. That's 1. You get 1 over pi minus the 1 over pi. Those cancel. And then we get 4 plus 7, which is 11. So 190 comma 11 with some really uneven braces right there. That's it. So this video really takes you through how to find position vector, velocity vector, acceleration vector, going forwards and backwards, derivatives, integrals, distance, speed, angle with respect to the x-axis. I got you covered, dude. I'll see you in the exercises. Peace.